Now, both the Florida House and Senate have passed their budgets and negotiations between leaders of the two chambers set to begin. But Jake Stofan tells us everything they've approved is still subject to change. The Senate and House are $2 billion apart on their state spending plans, and neither party is happy with some of the decisions so far. This is a starting point. Uh, we still have a very long road to go. Cuts to hospitals drove the most ire. Cuts to hospitals? Safety net hospitals? During a once-in-a-lifetime pandemic? Makes no sense. As did a 50% cut to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund in the House plan. We have an affordable, affordable housing crisis throughout the entire state. There is, however, money on the table to sure up holes. The Senate budget not only leaves out the $2 billion in extra state revenue, they still haven't even factored in the expected $10 billion in federal stimulus. Democrats want the money to go directly to Floridians. Things like a small business relief system or money to the the pockets of our essential workers. But the House has allocated the federal dollars mostly to one-time expenses and beefing the state's reserves. This is a balanced budget that reflects our beliefs and our, that our state should not spend more than it takes in. And we have an obligation to prepare for Florida's future. With the Senate discussing a similar approach, the House Speaker is optimistic going into negotiations. You know, I kind of like how we're, we're lined up with the Senate. I think that, um, you know, the differences are, you know, are really not that stark. The two chambers have three weeks to come to a final agreement if they hope to end session on time. Reporting from the state capitol, Jake Stofan, TV 20 News. The House's spending plan costs $97 billion, while the Senate's at five, or $95 billion. Both are short of the governor's proposed budget, which with stimulus money is just shy of $100 billion.